10 seconds to go signals the start of our national flag on the world. The count of one, five number, seconds to number go. five from the second row of the grid. John Goss will try and spear through. He makes a pretty good start. Let's watch him though. The field goes towards the start after he is passed. Brock who made a bad start and is back in one run. Bob Jane on the outside after Colin Bond. But it's Bond first. And then on the outside of the big Falcon are going hard was uh, Bobby Jane, but it's the Falcon in second spot. And Bond has a long lead as they go for the first of 163 times up Mountain Street. And the Falcon of Goss showing its great power there as it goes out after Bond. John Goss has now got a tremendous opportunity to carry the Ford flag all the way home. He's the only one that's got any opportunity now. I think uh, Moffitt's race is run to a certain extent. Murray Carter is not in contention. But on the other hand, in such a short time already, Peter Brock is leading this race. is over one minute and 17 seconds ahead of John Goss. John Goss is still carrying the Ford flag pretty well. He's uh, quite a way back, but he's well placed to do well if something goes wrong with those two leading cars. This will be a race that John Goss would dearly love to win. He's been trying for five years, and this is undoubtedly the main race on the Australian calendar. He'd love to knock it off. Goss is probably the most popular driver competing here today at Mount Panorama. Bear in mind that John Goss is still well placed. John Goss and Kevin Bartlett have lost very little time in the pits, and they're poised for success if any trouble afflicts these two cars, or if the co-drivers go too slowly on this central and critical spell. So what's going to happen with Peter Brock's cars smoking like fury, Colin Bond in the pits, Bob Forbes looking as though he might suddenly inherit first place, John Goss looking as though he might jump oh. from fourth to second, and Pete Brock is in far more trouble than ever Colin Bond has been in. That's pouring out his exhaust pipe. And the crowd is starting to cheer and to go mad. The, the 20 deep crowd on pit straight waving their arms in unison as John Goss last pass. And it's Forbes and Nagus now in four in second spot. But things are really changing here. Fairly dry down the bottom, but our cameras up top show it's pouring with rain at the top of the circuit. And things are hazardous. Just anchor kind across the road along the curve past McPhillamy Park and bumped into the bank bloody heavily. It just rammed into the earth bank and uh, it has got sort of caught in the gutter and with that blown no, right front tire, I just couldn't get it to come back onto the road and it took about five or six hundred yards at very high speed to coax it back onto the road. And I, I kept saying to myself over and over again, you're going too fast, you've got to lose more speed. And in the end, I just seemed to be walking the car down towards Forest Elbow. The, the magnesium wheel started to break up under the car and I could hear fragments banging up under the chassis. So I waited for a break in the traffic and drove across to the right-hand side of Mountain Straight and put that damaged wheel on the grass and drove it all the way down on the grass to save it from breaking up. Alan Moffat, out of the race, but still joining in the spirit of the things as he tries to get help for John Goss to get him out there because Forbes and Nagus are closing bit by bit. Colin Bond, well back now, running around fifth but still trying terribly hard. Never gives up, does Colin Bond. Bob Forbes going past him to also call into the pits and therefore go on to wet weather rubber. And in the meantime, Goss has just about finished that changeover. So he's out now, whilst most of his sparring companions, his opposition, are coming in to do what he's just been forced to do. We've never had a finish like this at Bathurst. And in the lead is Kevin Butler, the old hand of racing. So badly injured earlier this year in a race at New Zealand, who would have thought he'd have recovered from those terrible injuries to be in a car leading Bathurst in the closing lap of this race? What an exciting lap. Oh, talk of excitement, things still happening, cars spinning on the circuit here. There it is, one lap to go, 6.2 kilometres. And Kevin Bartlett only has to finish now to win the most prized race in all of Australia. A marvellous challenge from Forbes in a tremendously well-judged, well-driven, well-prepared race by Goss by Bartlett and by their team manager, Max McLeod. It is Kevin Bartlett who takes the checkered flag to win the 1964 Hardy Brodo 1000 for John Goss and it's a, an elated John Goss in the pit who at last has won the Hardy Brodo 1000.